Hey everyone, welcome back. We want to wish all of you a very safe and happy holidays. And now, let's go see our best friend, Steve Hayes, the tired old queen of the movies. Oh, Johnny. About time. Ah. Tired old queen of the movies. Johnny, Merry Christmas. My favorite actor of all time in classic films is Cary Grant. And I wanted to do a film of his with his favorite leading lady, Irene Dunn. So I decided to do The Awful Truth from 1937, directed by Leo McCary. This is a screwball comedy. Now, Irene Dunn had come to Hollywood because she was playing Magnolia in the touring company of Showboat. Somebody saw her, they brought her out, and they cast her in this movie called Cimarron, which won the Best Picture Award early in the 30s, and she was an Oscar nomination, and she became an instant star. For the next five or six years, she starred in mostly women's stories, you know, uh, like A Magnificent Obsession. They were very, very serious dramas, you know, and usually some, with somebody like Robert Taylor or Melvin Douglas or someone like that. Well, then in 1936, they cast her opposite Melvin Douglas in a play movie called Theodore Goes Wild, which was a screwball comedy, and everybody suddenly realized that she could do comedy. Not only that she could do comedy, but that she was one of the great comedians in films. Had your mind all made up about me, didn't you? Well, they decided to put Cary Grant and she together for The Awful Truth, which is basically a story of a marriage uh, uh, that flounders. The whole thing's built on faith. If you've lost that, well, you've lost everything. At the beginning of the movie, these, this couple get divorced. Yes, I suppose when that's gone, the marriage is washed up, isn't it? They fight over custody as to who gets the, the terrier. Oh, come on, fella. Come, come on. on. Come on. Don't pay attention to that. Come on, Smith. Which was Asta in the Thin Man movies. Do you mean that? Uh -huh. She suddenly realizes that she's in love with him, really, and doesn't really want to divorce him, and they have a certain amount of days before the divorce comes final, and she does everything possible to get him back. Uh, up on the park when we go, I cast my dream. I never could do that. But now I know I'm in the cold. Woo, 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 woo. I've been so long with the wind. Woo. They were perfect together. Her whole thing is she had a creamy sour voice, you know, and her whole thing was that she laughed at Cary Grant all the time. <laughs> oh, that's too bad, Jerry. Oh, did it hurt you much? It's very subtle with her comedy. He would say something and she'd go, uh-huh, uh, -huh, uh, -huh, uh -huh. She's like, <laughs> oh, we've had some grand laughs together. And she could break your heart at the same time. She got five or six Oscar nominations in her career. She was just, she could do anything. I'll always adore you. Till death do us part. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> also in this movie, in an Oscar nominated supporting performance is Ralph Bellamy. Ralph Bellamy, as you saw in His Girl Friday, often played the other guy who was in love with the heroine. Well, in this one, he plays this oil man. Ah, oh, shucks, lives with his ma, you know, and he's never met a, a sophisticated woman like this. And he is hilarious. We're here on a visit. I'm in oil, you know. Marinated, so to speak. <laughs> Say, that's a good one. <laughs> I gotta remember to tell that to me. There's a scene where they go out dancing and he does this down home version of dancing and and she is mortified but because Cary Grant's there with his new girlfriend in the club she feels like she has to keep dancing with him and it's one of the most hysterical scenes in screwball comedy <laughs> later on where uh, she's living with her aunt. One of her ex-paramours, the reason that Carrie is, has left her, shows up unexpectedly. Well, every time I open the door, somebody walks in. How'd you do? How'd you do? So Irene Dunn uh, hustles him into the bedroom and shuts the door when Carrie arrives unexpectedly. Carrie's trying to woo her and she knows that if he finds this guy in the room, it's gonna be trouble. Well, I'm changing. Uh, you get the car and I'll meet you out in front. There's another knock on the door. Before he can stop it, Cary Grant goes into the bedroom with the other guy, and in comes Ralph Bellamy. No, 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 no. But, uh, you, but you... 
she's trying to explain this whole situation. Well, I really don't know. I'm trying to get him out of there. Suddenly the door flies open. The first guy comes running out. <laughs> Carrie Grant comes running out. They whisk through everybody. <laughs> and Irene Dunn's aunt goes, They forgot to touch second. Yeah! <laughs> it's all that really, really sophisticated, clever kind of slapstick stuff. And it really works. It was up for Best Picture of the Year. Leo McCary, who went on to do Going My Way and The Bells of St. Mary's and Affair to Remember, he won Best Director of the Year for this movie. He had directed the Marx Brothers movie, so he really knew a lot about comedy. And Cary Grant and Irene Dunn went on to make five other movies together, in one of which he got nominated for an Oscar, Penny Serenade. And she, unfortunately, she was a little bit older than most of her contemporaries, so she left pictures in the early 50s and she became a representative for the United Nations and stuff, which was really too bad because she, uh, you know, like Rosalind Russell, just had a, a, a bewitching comic, sense of comic timing, and it was a real loss. <laughs> But I think you're going to just love the all-out screwball hilarity of Cary Grant, Irene Dunn, and Ralph Bellamy in Leo McCary's classic, The Awful Truth. Let's all go to the lobby. Jeez, I was, uh -huh. uh -huh. She had a really creamy voice. Like, oh, wow, well, that's really <sighs> wonderful, you know. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat.